I'm lost for words. I've struggled year after year to make myself worthy of your appreciation. And I'm overjoyed playing for my folks. It matters not if I shall play for the people of the world. There's a kinship tonight that strikes here. That will live forever in my memory. Something that only you and I can understand. Thanks. Good night. Audience of one. One? One thousand? Listen, they're still raving. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. Yes, Grace. They were nice to me. Wonderful. And I'm grateful. No, I wish Mother could have been here tonight. Mother heard you. From way up there. I guess you're right, Grace. She must be very, very happy tonight. Say, Dad, I love the tone of your violin. It's better than mine. Well, it's not all in the violin. You have great talent, my boy. And all you've got to do is work hard and develop it. I'll do my best, Dad. Come in. Mr. Williams, I'm Mrs. John Church Brown, chairman of the entertainment committee of the Crown Hill Temple of the Holy Ascension. I'm very, very glad to know you indeed. Thank you, thank you. It was a great success, Arthur. A mighty fine performance. Thank you. Brother Williams, you were simply divine. I love every note you played. You know, I would love to present you and your violin to our congregation next Sunday morning. I'll be very, very glad to do it. Well, that'll be fine, uh... But I'm Mr. Williams' manager. Of uh, course, you know his fee is a thousand dollars a performance. Oh, uh, yes, of course, of course. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, some other time, perhaps. Goodbye, Mr. Williams. Goodbye. Nestor, this is the first time I've been to one of these shows. I think he's a pretty good fiddler. <laughs> thank you, thank you very much, sir. You... I mean it. You sure swings a wicked bow. Uh, you. Flatter me, sir. How shall I repay you? <laughs> well, next time I see you around in those spots, I'll play a couple of tunes on my banjo for you. They tell me I'm pretty good, too. I bet you are. You bet I am. Well, so long. <laughs> Looks like uh, you and the uh, banjo player are going to have a joint recital. <laughs> uh, I just talked to the uh, Wilson Concert Bureau, and uh, they're planning a transcontinental tour for you. Oh, that's fine. Wonderful. Suppose we go over to the club and discuss it further. My car's outside. That's a good idea. But we'll have to drop by and let the children off first at home. Oh, I'd rather walk, Dad. Yeah. Sure, I'd rather walk, too, if I carry Dad's violin. Well, you won't drop it. You know, it's a very precious thing. In fact, the most precious thing I have in this world outside of you children. No, Dad. Didn't you say this is going to be my violin someday? Oh, yes, yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> nice. My, my. Well, let's get going. Thank you. 
Well, Mr. Williams, the time has come to remove your cast. Doctor, I've waited a long time for this. I want to put the violin into my hand again and feel my fingers upon the string. And may I be the first to hear you play? Oh, give me a little time to get back in form, and I'll give you a private concert. You and my nurse have been very wonderful to me. Thanks. Well, here we go. Now, slowly, move your wrist as in the playing position. Take it slowly. Yes, sir. The muscles of the wrist are okay, but you have to give the nerves a chance to adjust themselves. Now, very slowly, move your fingers. I can't move them. Try it again, Mr. Williams. Never be a great violinist. You are not a musician here. You have no soul for music. All you play is notes, sharps and flats, and mostly flats. I can't stand to listen to you. But listen, Mr. Williams, I'm paying you for violin lessons, not to get balled out. If I'm wasting your time, perhaps I'd better get another teacher. All right, then go ahead. Get out. The quicker the better. Johnny. Johnny, did you rehearse humorous? Yes, Dad, just like you told me, and I think I got it. I need a little inspiration. Let me hear a real artist play before I take my next pupil. Let me hear it. Thank you. 
Here's a new order. Thank you. What are you doing this evening? Why, nothing. I was just going home. How about having dinner with me? I'd love to, but I'll have to call my father and see if it'll be all right with him. Fine. It is practically a date. Your dad gave Lester Mason an awful bawling out. Now he's going to stop taking lessons. That's too bad. Dad's temper is getting worse and worse. Yes, and now he has only one pain pupil left. Yeah, Dickie Morley. I don't like him either. Just because his dad owns a grocery store, he puts on airs. And he's always trying to make up to me. But you've got to hand it to him. He certainly studies hard. I hate playing piano accompaniments for him, even if your dad does give me 50 cents a lesson. I wish I had half his patience for practicing. Oh, but Johnny, you can play circles around him. Not the way Dad thinks. I've got to learn control, repose. It's awful hard, Mary. You know the way I like to play? How? I'd like to play like a bird flies, this way and that, up and down, winging and swinging through the air. No control. Whistling, singing, shouting. Just music. I think I know what you mean. Let's play humorous again. You swing it and I'll just run wild. I hope I'm not late. No, Dickie, you're right on time. Johnny, do you realize what you are doing? You're desecrating a classic. You're committing a crime against music. Don't you ever let me hear you play that way again. No, sir. That goes for you too, young lady. Yes, sir. Now, Clara. I'd never do a thing like that, Mr. Williams. I wish Johnny had half of your ambition. You had half of his talent. I think swing is terrible. I don't see why Johnny wants to play like that. Oh, that's all right. Let, let me hear your lesson. Come on. do for you? I want to see if you can add to my personal charm. Yes. We make a personal study of making people look better. That's my point. You see, I'm on the verge of being a concert artist. Is that so? And what do you play? Well, I don't mean to be shining my own apple, but they tell me I'm as great on a banjo as Mr. Arthur Williams was on the violin. Do you know Mr. Williams? I heard his last recital and understand he'll be playing again soon. Yes? And well, believe me, when he does, I'll be there. I picked up a lot of tricks from that fellow. That's great. You know, you should be smart looking. Sparkling when you make your personal appearance. You're right. Looks mean everything. And that's what I need. Everything. But Mr. Stilton, I want your personal guarantee that if I use your glaciola, it won't turn my hair red. That would be fatal to my career. Miss Williams. Will you write out a personal guarantee that our supreme glossiola will give him that million-dollar look? Yes, sir. It will add to your personal charm, Mr. Stringbean. Oh, now, will you excuse me, please? How do you know Mr. Williams will play again? I don't know. Ain't he going to play? I hope so. I always dreamed of the day when I could play in a joint recital with 
Mr. Williams. Sam. I'm leaving for New York this evening, Sam. I'm going to open a new branch. Miss Williams, how long will you be gone, Dad? Oh, about two weeks or so. Don't make any changes in the office for us while I'm gone. They're about as good as we've ever had. All right. I'm going on a trip, Gracie. Sam will be in charge of the office while I'm away. Yes, Mr. Stilton. You know the office routine better than he, so probably you'll give him a helping hand. I will gladly, Mr. Stilton. I'm going to unpack my suitcase. That's something I won't let anyone else do for me. I'll see you at supper. Okay. Goodbye. Grace? Yes, Sam? Are you going out this evening? Why, yes, I have a date. Gus Herbert? You get to drive. Well, Gracie, I think you're wasting your time with Gus. He'll never amount to anything. What I do is strictly my own business. Well, I don't mean to be getting fresh, Grace. But Gus hasn't enough future for a girl like you. What's a future when you love someone? Oh, it's like that, eh? Uh, I didn't realize. I'm sorry, Sam, but that's just the way things are. I'm sorry, too, Grace. You know, I could give a girl like you everything you need. Fine clothes, a swell home, a big car. In fact, anything you might mention. And then you know you're dead. I get your drift, Sam. But it's no dice. You see, I'm just about crazy over Gus. And I think he's the same about me. So that squares things, doesn't it? I guess it does, Grace. Lots of luck. Thanks, Sam. I'm awfully sorry. Well, Gracie, here's something you might have for you. Dr. Charles Madison, the world-famous nerve specialist, is in the city for a limited stay. The great doctor will make the rounds of our hospitals in order to study cases which might interest him. His headquarters will be at the general hospital, but he let it be understood that he will not take on private patients. His work is to be confined to research only. That's wonderful. I'm going for Mr. Stilton's tickets now, and on the way back I'll stop by the hospital and see if I can't make an appointment for Dad. I hope you can. That doctor has a wonderful reputation. But don't forget our dinner date. As if I could. I'll pick you up at your house at 7. 7? That's my lucky number. Bye, darling. But, Doctor, you must make this one exception to your rule. This man's talent is like your own. It belongs to the world. All right. I'll take the case. Bring him in uh, in the morning at 8. Thank you so much, Doctor. We'll be here promptly at 8 in the morning. Leave the dinner dishes. I'll do them when I come home. That's all right, sis. I'll do them. Dad, you'd better go to bed early. You've got an appointment for 8 o'clock in the morning. All right. Well, it's just another wild goose chase. I've spent every cent I ever earned on doctors. Even for my violin. None of them ever helped me. But, Dad, this is a very great special. I know, but it's a waste of time. Well, the appointment's made. You've got nothing to lose. All right. I said I'll go. Good night.
ask you something, Grace. Something very, very serious. Go ahead, Gus. I'll answer if I can. How about you and I getting married? That's the one question I can't answer. Anyhow, not now. But why not? You know that I love you. Maybe I'm fooling myself, thinking that you love me. Why should we delay any longer? Well, Gus, it's like this. You know I have my father and my little brother to take care of. And when I marry, I want to be a full-time wife. No job or office. Just making a home for you and maybe... Well, you know what I mean. I guess you're right, Grace. I guess we'd better wait. But you'll wait for me, Gus. Who else would I wait for? I think it's the displacement of the nerve adhesions that's the cause of the paralysis. An operation is certainly indicated. Do you think you can restore my hand the way it was? Well, there's better than an even chance. Well, how much would such an operation cost? About a thousand dollars. A thousand dollars? Why, that's a fortune to us right now. I told you, Doctor, my father was a great violinist. And when he plays again, a thousand dollars will be a small amount for us to pay you. Won't you please trust us? All right, I'll do it. If you can take care of the hospital expenses. Well, how much will they be? Oh, about three hundred dollars. I think we can manage that amount, Doctor. Thank you so much, Gain. That'll be fine. But remember, I'm on my way to a reunion of my class in Sorbonne, Paris, and I'll only be in town for two weeks more. We won't forget. Thank you. Good day, Doctor. I hope I see you again. But three hundred dollars is a lot of money, Grace. But I'm sure Dr. Matson can help my father. And even if the operation isn't a success, I can pay you back out of my future salary. All right. I'll let you have the money, but only on one condition. What's that? That you stop running around with Gus Herbert and pay a little more attention to me. Thanks for your kind offer of help. But as I told you before, my private life is my own. None of them ever did. Oh, Dad, now don't start feeling like that. We'll get the money somehow. Look, Mary, I know how you and I can make some money to help my dad. How? Let's start in some of the cafes and play swing. I know Dad won't like it, but gee, he needs the money. And this is for him. I bet the people will like it and give us lots of money. Wouldn't that be swell? Yes, and we'd make $300 in no time. Let's start in the Mella Cafe. We'll play a few bars straight, and then we'll swing on out. But what if your dad hears about it? Oh, he'll never find out. We'll clean up, I bet. Oh, guys. Yes? I've got some cash here I want you to deposit at the bank. All right. Here are three $50 checks. Three $50 checks? A $50 bill. $50 bill. Five tens. Five tens. And two twenties. And two twenties. I'll be back in a half an hour. All right, Gus.
You're fifty dollars short. Short? Fifty dollars? I must have mislaid it in the office. Deposit these. I'll be right back. What's the matter? Lose something? Yes. When I got to the bank, I was fifty dollars short. I must have dropped or mislaid it here. Maybe you dropped it in the street on the way to the bank. I couldn't have. I had all the rest wrapped with a rubber band. Maybe you lost it in one of your pockets. Impossible. Oh, I don't know. It has been done. Just what do you mean? You heard me. Are you insinuating that I'm a thief? Take it any way you want to. You take that back. Why, you... Stop it. What is this? He called me a thief. A thief? Why, what's this? That's the bill that I lost. It was under the rug. It certainly didn't walk there by itself. You mean to say that I'm there? Why, you are fired. That's all right. I don't want to work for you anyway. Your dad's a swell person, but I can't work with you as boss. Wait till your father hears about this. Well, if you don't like the way I run this office, you know what you can do. You bet I know what I can do. I quit. Gus is right. You haven't got what it takes to be a boss. Kids are too young to play well. My guest is only used to hearing the very best. Won't you please give us a try? We do play well. Yes, yeah, some classic stuff they teach in music schools. Oh no, we play jazz and swing and rubbers and everything like that. It's really very good. We make it up as we go along. Now I know it's no good. You kids have nothing to sell. Beat it. Go home. Look, Mary, I've got an idea. What is it? Come with me. The boss said we were to play a number. If you don't believe me, ask. All right. They get there. office job gone, our only sure income is cut off. I don't know what to do. Jobs are so hard to find. Look, if you promise to keep it a secret, I'll show you something. What is it, Johnny? over 
Johnny, where did this come from? Mary and I have been playing swing in the Mella Cafe. The people liked us and gave us lots of money. The owner said we were welcome anytime. But Johnny, whatever made you do that? We figured he that Dad needs for hospital expenses. I'm afraid getting the money that way will be too slow. I'm afraid the doctor won't wait. We'll just have to give up the operation. Oh, but at least we won't go hungry. But that money belongs to you and Mary. What's the difference? So long as it keeps Dad from worrying. You keep it, sis. And each Saturday, continue bringing home your salary. Meantime, you can look for another job. But Johnny, suppose Dad should find that you're playing swing in cafes. Why, he'd be furious. Oh, uh, he'd never find out. He never goes to places like that. You're such a sweet brother. You better put it away. They're playing swing right now at the Mellow Cafe. Are you sure? I saw them there. You know, Johnny, I saw Dickie Morley standing over there by the door. What of it? I hope he liked that swing. Kids, Mr. Williams, they're good. Everybody likes swing. Who are you? I met you at your last recital. I'm the banjo player. I was hoping to play a joint concert with you. A joint concert with a banjo player? That all depends on who's playing the banjo. Come on. Come on. I'll drill the skill of the masters into you and drive out the spirit of jazz I have to make you play 20 hours straight. Now play. Play. playing swing at the Mellow Cafe. And I had to punish him by making him play for several hours. Do you know why he was doing it? Mere devil trick. No. He and Mary have been playing swing in the cafe to earn enough money to pay for your operation. Are you telling the truth? The truth, not the half of it. What's more, I lost my job, and he gave me the money they'd already earned, so that you wouldn't have to worry about our only income being cut off. Son. Yes, Daddy? Son. 
Myself, Johnny. Please. <laughs> it's all right, Dad. I'll never do it again. No, I'm sorry, Dad. That's no reason you should have fired Gus Herbert. Anybody's apt to make a mistake. Well, he he got too smart and started a fight. What about Grace? She quit of her own accord. I think I know what's the matter. You get them on the phone and have them come to the office. All right. And that's just the way it happened, Mr. Stilton. And then he told me I could quit, too. So I did. I opened a new branch office in New York, and I want you to manage it. I think it'll do you good to get away. And you two can have your jobs back with a raise. Thank you, Mr. Stilton. Hello? Yes, this is Mr. Carpenter. This is Mr. Stilton speaking. I've heard of you and your orchestra. I wonder if you'd be interested in arranging a radio program for me. I would be glad to represent you. Just what have you in mind? Being a love of music, I'd like to sponsor a program that would give all amateurs an opportunity to be heard over the air. Sounds very good to me. Good. I think with you and your orchestra to be featured, the Stilton Beauty product would have a program that not only would help the amateurs, but would also publicize the product. Gentlemen, I have a very important announcement to make. An announcement will be interest to all music lovers, especially those who have never had an opportunity of expressing themselves to the public. A new program that will give all amateurs an opportunity of furthering their career. Starting next Thursday, the Stilton Beauty Products will sponsor a program open to all amateurs. There will be prizes totaling $500 to be divided as follows. First prize, $250. Second prize, $125. Third prize, $75. And fourth prize, $50. All contestants must register four days before they wish to appear. Look, sis, I've got an idea. I'm going to enter the contest and maybe win the prize. Oh, Johnny, wouldn't it be wonderful if you could? And Dad could have his operation. But you wouldn't play swing, would you, Johnny? Uh, you know what Dad thinks about swing. No. Dad, I want you to come with me this evening to a radio program my company's giving. Oh, I don't want to listen to a radio contest. Mediocre performance. Cheap jazz. Yeah. But Dickie's going to play. What? That boy's not ready to play in public. I've got a surprise for you. What's that? Johnny's going to play, too. Oh, Johnny. Yes. Uh, what's he going to play? Oh, the mazurka. Ah, Johnny. I'll get dressed. Thanks, Dad. Friends of the radio audience, the Stilton Beauty Products Hope you will enjoy their initial program and will become one of their most ardent supporters. As you know, music is the international language, expressing sorrow, joy, laughter, tears, love. We are considered one of the most musical people on earth because we have suffered music washes away from the soul the dust of everyday life there's beauty in all music classic swing or jazz let me illustrate joy ex 
expressed in the classic. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now have our first contestant. Now, here they come. Three little maids. Three beautiful little maids. What's your name? Sarah. Sarah. Beautiful name. What's yours? Virginia. Oh, another beautiful name. And yours? Lynette. Oh, three beautiful names. Well, now, what are you girls going to do? Sing and then we're going to tap. You're going to sing and then you're going to tap. Ah, that's very good. What are you going to sing? We're going to sing Kentucky Babe. Sing Kentucky Babe. Then, have you got your music? Yes. And must I play your dance for you? Yes, if you play two foxtrots for it. Two
Our next contestant? Oh, what is your name? Well, they... Well, they call me String Bean Johnson. Oh, they call you String Bean Johnson, huh? Well, what's your business? If any. Any, sir. I'm a banjo player. <laughs> oh, you're a banjo player. Mm hmm Well, uh, are you going to play the banjo for us tonight? Yes, sir. I'm as good with the banjo as Mr. Arthur Williams was with the violin. Oh, you're as good as the banjo as Mr. Arthur Williams was with the violin, huh? Well, what are you going to play for us? At last. I'm going to play Mr. Arthur Williams' favorite concert number in swing. Oh, you are, huh? <laughs> well, do your stuff. Long, tall, dark, and handsome. Oh, sweet. Three beans are all right. Thank you, sir. Yes, <laughs> all right. Uh, next contestant. What's your name? Dickie Morley. Dickie Morley, huh? A uh, fine boy. How old are you, Dickie? Fourteen. Fourteen years old, huh? Well, what are you going to do, Dickie? I'm going to play Tantel. Oh, you're going to play Tantel on your violin, huh? Yes, sir. Well, that's very good. This is your music, is that it? Yes, sir. Well, here you are. There's the music. Dickie, go to it. Success to you. Very, 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 very good. Next contestant. All right. Two of you here this time, huh? All right, what are you two going to do now? Let's see. What's your name? Johnny Williams. Johnny Williams, huh? How old are you, Johnny? Twelve. Twelve years old. Is your sister? No. Sweetheart? No. Ah, uh, Johnny. What's your name? My name is Mary. Well, Mary, what are you going to do? I'm going to accompany him. Oh, so you're going to come and tell him. What are you going to play, Johnny? With Mazurka. You Mazurka. All right, Johnny, go to it. You and your sister.
Well, according to the laws, there's no doubt who's the winner. Good boy, Johnny. Good girl, Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. I can use them. Oh, 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 my head. Gee, Johnny, you played wonderful. I want to confess something. I did something awful mean to you. You mean the night when you told my dad about the Mellow Cafe? Never mind. I forgot it. No, Johnny. I, I filed the strings on your violin so they'd break. It's all right. Everything turned out all right. Then we'll still be friends? Sure. Gee, thanks. Thanks. I'm sorry, Dad. I just couldn't help playing swing. It was the only way out. Look, look, Johnny, look. Dad, how did it happen? I'll tell you later. Give me that violin. My heart still belongs to the masters. But look what swing has done for me. <laughs> 